In the headlines, National Democratic Party NDC elects presidential and parliamentary candidates. People of Avatime in the Volta region celebrate Rice Festival. And on the foreign front, manhunt for three suspected gunmen in Mali hotel attack. Hello, good evening, and many thanks for joining us. We are coming to you live on your news channel, GBC 24 and Ghana Television. This is News Hour. My name is Akpene Avo Ajaja. And I'm Conrad Kakraba. Voting in the NDC presidential and parliamentary elections has ended with a number of challenges which has led to the postponement of voting in some constituencies in Ashanti, Bonahafo and Ningo Pram Pram, among others. We now go over to our correspondents to update us on the counting process at the collation centers. Let's go first to Gifty AJ. She's at the Kole Klote constituency here in the Greater Accra region. And that's a very interesting uh, constituency. If she will be telling us what's happening there now. Good evening, Gifty. Hello, Gifty. GBC 24 and we come into you live from the Clote Kole constituency here in the capital Accra. And uh, voting has ended in all 10 polling stations in this constituency. As I talk to you, collation hasn't started, but we're currently at the Osu police station where in a GV we'll get to know how many votes will go for the president or how many yeses will go for him. In the meantime, we don't know who the current parliamentary candidate is. In this constituency, we have two key personalities competing for the MPship position. We have a very experienced politician or a matured politician in the person of Mr. Ni Ama Ashite, a former regional minister and the incumbent MP, against a very young politician, Dr. Ezenator Rollins, the daughter of the former president, uh, Mr. Rollins, a, a race that a lot of people have described as a David against Goliath. But uh, because it hasn't started, I cannot give you the details for now. Of course, we'll be hanging around to know who it will eventually, eventually carry the day and also how many yeses the president will get. But the atmosphere here is all relaxed. There are people here who have come here to see how the whole event will go. So as and when we get the final winner in terms of the MP ship position and the total vote for the president, trust me, I'll let you know. So I am Gifty AJ reporting from the Osu police station here in the Klote Kole constituency in the capital, Accra. coming through with that report and so we'll keep on monitoring the situation in that particular constituency we'll bring you up to speed with whatever is pertaining there let's also go to the northern region now and speak to my colleague abdul hai Muman. good evening abdul hello abdul hello Conrad. yes so where exactly are you and what's happening there currently i'm at the bishop uh, uh, polling station uh, around the Chogo area in the Tamale uh, North constituency where we have um, seven people contesting to become um, uh, the uh, parliamentary candidates for this particular area. But those who are really in the offering for this position are four key members of the party. And they are Al Hassan Suhili, who is uh, the host of the morning show on Radio Gold. We have the former CSIR boss in the person of Dr. Uh, Salifu. Uh, we also have the a former member, uh, aspirant, uh, Abdul Salam, as well as a former uh, member of parliament for the same area, uh, Alaji Abukari Sumani. And uh, counting is still going on in many of the constituencies here in the northern region. Already I have been to the Tamale South uh, constituency where Haruna Idrisu is being contested by um, one man also known, his, his, his name is actually one man, uh, his name is uh, Mohammed uh, Amin, but they call him one man here in Tamale. He is contesting against um, uh, the incumbent member of parliament, Harun Idris. And so far, the only clear information I can give you is that Harun Idris is leading with the landslide in his area. But you know, because we cannot give you 
um, updates on the individual police stations because there are so many of them. I'll just give you a brief overview of what's happening here in Tamale. Um, I've told you about the uh, Tamale North already and uh, from the counting so far, uh, the uh, Hassan Tuhini appears to be in the lead. But then again, when you look at um, the Tamale Central, where the incumbent MP is um, the uh, Aladi Inu Safuseni, who is also the Minister for Roads and Highways, he is keenly being contested by engineer Seydou Ibrahim. And uh, the contest there has been very keen, comrade. But again, to give you a general picture of what has been happening here in the three regions of the north, because I've been to the upper west region today, I've been in the Upper East region today, and currently I am in the Northern region. Generally, the atmosphere has been very calm, except for the few cases where we have had many people complain about not finding their names in the register. In Tamale in particular, and I'm referring to the Afajura police station in particular, and then one other police station known as the Kuli Kuli School police station, there was nearly, nearly uh, violence because... Uh, some people claimed they couldn't find their names in the register and, and that those names were intentionally taken off the register by some people. They alleged and they named names. Reports were made to the police and the police arrived in good time to prevent any further violence because some tax had come to the police stations to seize uh, the voting materials and to stop uh, counting from taking place, but the police were in control and uh, everything is smooth now. Uh, so, uh, so far, nobody has been declared winner yet because counting is still ongoing, and that is due to the delay in the start of uh, the, the, the electoral process. Uh, for many of the police stations, elections started at about and some even delayed until about 12 midday, and uh, that explains why uh, after about 5 p.m. there were still so many people in the queue waiting for their turns to vote. Voting ended not too long ago, and counting is currently ongoing, and that's how come we do not want to give you conjectures. We'll wait until the Electoral Commission confirms, and then we'll report back as to who has won and who hasn't. But the issues here haven't been centered on... Uh, who has performed and who hasn't performed. The issues, especially in the three regions of the north, have to do with personalities, where, for instance, in the uh, Kaleo uh, constituency, where uh, uh, Honorable Aban Bagman is standing, for instance, the issue has not been whether he has performed or not, but it has to do with how long he has stayed in, in, in uh, Parliament. When you go to the Boga Central constituency, for instance, the issue still has to do with who really comes from the area and not about who uh, has performed and who hasn't performed. It's got to do with uh, indigenous people, whether or not one contestant is an indigenous person or not. And then here in Tamale, both uh, Tamale Central, has, they're not talking about the issues. They're talking about who it is that is more generous to the people. And these are the issues that the people are being, uh, voting on and not necessarily who has performed and who hasn't performed in Parliament. Interestingly, the Tamale Central, which is the most controversial uh, so far in, in, in the northern region, um, you recall that the NDC won uh, this seat in 1992. But in 1996, at that time it was known as the Sabunjida uh, constituency, the NDC lost it to the NPP. NPP held it until 2004 when Professor Wayosini came into the picture. He had, uh, you, know, you know, gone into the NDC from the NPP. He won that seat. Later he resigned. There was a by-election and Honorable Inusa Fuseini won. And he has been the parliamentary candidate ever since Professor Wayosini resigned from that position. And today he's been, he's been keenly contested by uh, engineer Ibrahim Seydu. As we speak, we're still waiting for the results to come and we'll report back to you, comrades. All right. Thank you so much, Abdul High Movement. Speaking there from the three regions of the north. Akwene? Still on the NDC primaries, let's go over now to Adan and speak to our man on the ground, Maurice Ogbete. Hello, good evening, Maurice. Maurice, if you can hear me, what is happening currently at where you are? Hello? Yes, M Maurice. Hello? Maurice, can you hear me? 
Hello. Hello, Morris. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear okay. You. What, what can you tell us? What is happening currently in Ada? Well, at the moment, I just left the Ada police station where um, coalition was supposed to be done after um, uh, election was over. But as I speak to you, it looks like that is not going to happen because two of the electoral areas did not vote. There, there wasn't voting in two of the electoral areas. And so powers that be, I mean, the NDC and the Electoral Commission in the Adam constituency have decided that they will not collect the results today, but they will do that tomorrow when the two electoral uh, areas finally, you know, vote. And so um, the, the, the community members and supervisors of the NDC have to teach the uh, Adam police station the results to be counted today. But... I mean, officials also say that because the two electoral areas couldn't vote today, I mean, um, the, the, the counting can be done today. And so they'll just do that tomorrow when the other two electoral um, areas have voted at All right. Maurice, do we know why they didn't vote in those two uh, polling stations? Why didn't they vote? The two electoral areas didn't have their... Uh, Electoral materials on time. Okay. They didn't have the electoral materials on time, okay. and so they've been promised that by tomorrow everything will be sorted out. And so once the vote, I mean, counting can begin. But it looks like uh, not nobody is understanding this particular position. And for them, they, they will not leave the police station until the collection is done and uh, 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 counting is done and results are declared. But it doesn't look like they're going to get that tonight. And so tomorrow, after the two electoral areas vote, I mean, uh, we'll put everything together and declare results after that. All right. Thank you very much. Our man on the ground, Maurice Ogbete, reporting live from Adan. And this evening is all about the NDC primaries. Sure. <laughs> and so let's check out what we had earlier in the day when our reporters went around town to see what actually was happening on the ground during the voting process. The news team made our first stop at the Botiano Methodist Basic School polling station. Voting had already started. According to the presiding officer, Robert Owusu, voting had started on time, but there was a challenge because the names did not appear in a chronological order in the register. Officials were finding it difficult to find the names of the voters, and this made the whole process slow. This led to some anger and arguments. Also, the center was catering for 18 polling stations, but had only four election officials at post. Voting was, however, smooth and voters were trickling in at the MA Primary School at Koklobite and the New Covenant Preparatory School at Jedan Tuba, also under the Botiano Englishi Amanfru Electoral Area. The team then moved to the Weijagbawe constituency. Voting here was peaceful, though it is one of the flashpoints. Voters had to only vote for the presidential candidate because of an injunction placed on the parliamentary election. The presiding officer at the English Amanfro GHS polling station, George Oben Ose, briefed us on some of the challenges of the process. Some people would come and where they expect their names to be because they were doing it according to electoral um, polling station by polling station with the register. But somebody would come, the card that the person has that has been registered okay, officially, would have the polling station of where the person thought he or she was voting. But it changes. So, so that conflicting thing came up and people thought that the names were being expanded from the register. Ablekuma South constituency comprises areas such as Mamprobi, Kolegono and Choko. Many of the people are fishermen, traders, among others. The incumbent, Fritz Bafuo, is not seeking re-election. The Metropolitan Chief Executive of Accra, Alfred Oko van der Poy, is seeking to raise the NDC flag in the constituency coming against Wisdom Ni Amudodu, who has contested and lost twice in the same constituency. At the same page, number one, JHS, where Mr. Alfred Oko van der Poy was expected to vote, we were told when he came earlier in the morning, his name could not be found in the register. We started smoothly, but along the line we realized that the register that we were provided with were not arranged in that 
uh, alphabetical order. So when the people come, you have to check. Initially, we thought we, we could use the alphabet to check. We realized that no, everything has been mixed up. So you have to check meticulously before you, you see the names. And then the mayor also came. This is where he, he should have voted. He came, we checked through, his name wasn't in. And so he said he will go and come later. Maybe by then the pressure is down. Then we could look for his name so that he, he can vote. So, so far, that's it. So I, I would say it is the mix-up in the register. That has caused some, a bit of confusion. But uh, the, the security is here, so everything is, is under control. As at 10 a.m., 138 out of the 741 registered voters at the center had voted, according to the Mamprebi District Police Commander, ASP George Asari. Though all was initially moving well at the center, he was called to bring a reinforcement of police personnel when agitations began over the inability of some card-bearing members of the NDC to find their names in the register. The general security situation here, uh, is very sound. We have enough men here. Uh, the standby men have also been deployed here because as we heard that uh, there has been some challenges with the arrangements of the names in the register. We saw the need to come here and see what is happening. We don't wait till the problem erupts before we take action. So I would say this is a proactive you know, approach in solving cases. But I can say that for now the delegates have conducted themselves very well and uh, there's no problem as we speak. At the Blessed Assurance JHS, also in the Ablekuma South constituency, the presiding officer said some people were totally ignorant of what was going on, resulting in confusion. We had some people who came in um, without even ID card, not even the voter's ID card or the card bearing card. So we asked those people to um, just give us some time because of the queue. And some also came in because they heard there's a voting ongoing. They are not card-bearing members, yet they came in to vote. So such people, we, we have to cater for them as well. We educated them on as to what to do. And then those people were asked to go back. And it's not a national exercise, it's just for few um, people who have been asked to come and then take part in this voting exercise. In the Ablikuma Central constituency, which covers areas such as Latibiokoshi, Abusokai and Mataiko, three contestants were vying for the position. Alhaji Halidu Haruna, Peter Buama Otokuno and Base Hase. The incumbent, Mr. Teteo Chai, is not contested for re-election. At the Seven Great Princes Academy, all was well at the time of our visit. At the town council line polling station, however, the issue was about which polling agent was to assist the agent to cast their ballot. This problem was, however, solved amicably. At the Ablikuma West constituency, four candidates were contesting for election and in the Ablikuma North constituency, three were up for election. Voting generally was said to have started on time and there were no logistical problems. At Dom Kwabenya, voting got underway on schedule at the various polling stations which GBC24 visited. At the time of our visit at 9.07 a.m., seven people had cast their ballots out of a total of 165 registered voters at the Pentecost Church polling station at Dom West. The presiding officer, Sebastian Carlos Baca, told us how the process had gone on so far. We are expecting 165 people to come and cast their votes this morning. But as of now, only seven are here. Uh, it's very slow, but it's smooth. I have not gotten any challenges yet. Uh, by God willing, everything is moving on smoothly. Still at Dom, but at the Anglican School polling station, the presiding officer, A.J. Ebebio, explained that 44 voters had cast their ballots as against a total of 546 at the time of our visit. We've not encountered any difficulty since we started. And the, the rule we are applying is that when a person comes, with or without ID card, when the name is in the register, you should allow the person to you know, go through and vote. At the DC primary school polling station at Kwabenya, 
36 people had cast their ballots as at 10.05 a.m. this morning. Registered voters are 341. He gave his impressions about voting so far to GBC24. The materials came on time and uh, we started smoothly. We are expecting that by five, everybody might have finished casting the vote. The news team observed that some voters could not find their names in the biometric register in some centers. They were directed to try their luck at other stations. For GBC24, Emmanuel Amagashi reporting. Clote Kole constituency, which is one of the political hotbeds of the 34 constituencies in Accra, saw three parliamentary candidates, Ni John Coleman, Ni Ama Ashite, and Dr. Zanato Rollins, battle for grounds in the parliamentary elections of the ruling NDC, while candidate John Mahama went unopposed for flag bearer position. By 7 a.m., the SNAPS Primary School polling station at Asylum Down had opened for voting, according to presiding officer Nana Dako. Of the 543 total eligible voters, 243 had cast their ballots by half past 11, while voting got on peacefully in the presence of polling agents. But a number of people who gathered outside the yard complained that their names were missing from the register, though they had registered. The news team went to Tudut Central Mosque, where 180 out of the 656 eligible voters had cast their ballot peacefully. But that polling center also had the same challenge of missing names in the register, with known supporters of Dr. Zanato Rollins allegedly affected. <laughs> However, what caught the team's attention was a 78-year-old Mr. Benjamin Tete, who, though frail, had come to exercise his franchise. He said it is a satisfaction to do what he claimed was a religious civic duty. He said he has done this since 1992. The man of my choice. That is why I've struggled this morning to come here. GBC 24 then went to St. Barnabas Anglican Church at Osu, where a long queue gave a sense of an expanded electoral college by the NDC. By half past 10, 150 out of 755 registered voters had cast their ballot there. The incumbent, Niyama Ashite, had come to the polling station to see if all was well. We found out if the set missing names issue had caught his attention. No, I don't think that uh, these omissions affect one person. You know, it, it's a cross. Yeah? Because I've, I've had some of my people complaining that they, they, they could not find their name on the register. So, I mean, one cannot say that it's only one person, you know. The point is that people were given an opportunity to see the, the register. And uh, the opportunity was there for you to raise objections. From Osu, the team returned to Asalam Down, where Tempest had fled as the number of missing names kept rising. When incumbent Ni Ashiti arrived there, there was a spontaneous and coordinated reaction by some angry party people who could not find their names in the register. <laughs> but the timely intervention of the security saved the situation, after which the NP left the scene. Exactly 10 minutes later, his rival, Dr. Zanetta Rollins, arrived. She asked that all affected and aggrieved persons keep their cool while the party tries to solve the problem. We've come here, there's a tension around, okay, because the perception is that people are not being allowed to vote. And all we're trying to do is to help people understand if they can't find their names, they find their names on the side. We look, write their names down and we verify with the, with the register and if the names are indeed not there, we help to explain the situation and if their names are there, they come back and see the EC officer and be allowed to vote. Moments later, Vice President Kwesi Mr. Arthur arrived at the SNAPS nursery school to cast his ballot. After going through formalities, he shared his thoughts on the process with the media. Party members must, must vote. Um, this is a major undertaking that we have, we have done. We, we no other party in this country has done what we are trying to do. So there, there are bound to be problems and I hope that they will exercise some, some patience and they will sort the problems out. 
After asking for calm, he spoke with some aggrieved persons. He pledged to get to the bottom of the matter until the problem is solved. For the first time, the NDC party has extended its electoral college to give mandates to every single card-bearing member of the party to vote in the presidential and parliamentary primaries. There are two parliamentary aspirants for Okaikwe South, Isaac Mensa and Alexander Ekwaku. For the Okaikwe Central, we have Abdul Rashid Issa, John Kwesi Mensa, Ebenezer Ashley, Paul Apenu and Christian Jikasi. Godwin Akogan, Malik Adama and Abdul Razak Issa are contesting the northern constituency. Our first port of call was the Kaneshi South electoral area in the Okankwe South constituency. As at 7.45 a.m., 13 people had cast their ballots. At the St. Therese's Catholic Church, people were waiting in line to cast their vote. Some prospective voters were turned away as their names could not be located in the register. Like the rules of the game, any party member whose name does not appear in the register would not be able to cast his or her vote. Other places we visited were SDA Church Electoral Area in the Okaikwe South, Blemago Electoral Area in the Okaikwe Central Constituency, Success Achievers Electoral Area and the Archimota Central Market Electoral Area in the Okaikwe North Constituency. The situation was a bit different at Ararat Church in the Okaikwe South constituency. Voting was to take place inside the church premises. However, an ongoing wedding ceremony at the church led to the relocation of the electoral officials. They were moved across the street near the church. This led to the late start of voting, but the presiding officer said the time could be extended after 5 p.m. to allow members who remain in the line after 5 p.m. to vote. At the time the news team arrived at the Krobo 1 and 2 polling center in the Lojokuku constituency, 342 voters had cast their ballot for both the parliamentary and presidential candidates. Four aspirants are contesting the Lojokuku seat. They are Nino Tedua, Mr. Daniel Amate Minsa, Mr. Gilbert Minsa Amate, and the incumbent Mrs. Benita Sena Okitidia. Some argument arose when some voters whose names were present in the voter register were prevented from voting. According to a member of the NDC in the Lojukuku constituency, they had to prevent those people from voting because they were identified as not being members of the NDC. Some weeks ago, the voter register for the Lojukuku constituency was banned because it was said to be bloated. The whole constituency, we have about 8,500 8, uh, registered members. Ninieba is it shoot up to 11,000. In 11,000, there's a problem. We did the same. We sent it back. Those people are still in there. After some consultations, they were allowed to vote because, by the law of the party, once your name appears in the voters' register, you have the right to vote. At the Mesa Saba polling centre, also in the Lojukuku constituency, but for the long queue, voting was going on smoothly for both the parliamentary and presidential candidates. Out of the total number, 1,150 eligible voters expected to vote, 302 people had cast their ballot. The presiding officer, Mr. Benedict Clote, explained that the names in the register had not been arranged alphabetically and for that reason, it took some time to locate the names of the voters before they cast their ballot. He however assured them that whoever is in the queue before voting closes at 5 p.m. will be given the chance to cast their ballot. 
go to the phone lines again and go to the central region and speak to our correspondent Kinsley Nanabwedu to update us on what's happening there. Hello, Kinsley. Hi. Yes. Um, so, how is the process panning out, especially with the counting process? Thank you very much. I must say that counting has almost ended uh, in almost all the polling stations in the central region. And we are now almost at some of the coalition centers to find out from the exact figures and the exact minutes so far as this election is concerned. I can confirm to you that uh, you come to the coast south. Uh, we have Ricketts Hilton, who is the incumbent parliament in the coast south. He has won already and deployed. 308, which is 84.4 percent. The crews contend that it was just two. Thomas Hughes had 796. It's also 15, 15.6 percent. When you go to a Futu Senya West, I can also confirm to you that Honorable Hanatete, who is also the incumbent, has won the seat. He pulled 4,129 which is representing 97.5 percent, whereas its con other contender, Papa Oredu, had one one, which is also representing 2.45 percent. That is it. When you look at Winnipeg, that is in future area, uh, their counting has almost and We are yet to get confirmation from the uh, coalition center, but what I know is that Don Atta is also in the lead, and we are just hoping that after everything, that's what we're going to see. But it's not really confirmed from the left officers. But what we have gathered, it means that he is in the lead. When you come to KGE, that's Commander Adrian Gwesu Abrim, there are three contenders there. We have someone at Tamil, who happens to be a brother, a younger brother of Professor Ivan Satamil, the lead. And he's contesting with Francis Asma and one Matthew Kofi. And someone at Tamil is also in the lead there. And we are just waiting for a confirmation that we can make it out. When you go to Infantiman, there too, we have James Eson, who was the party chairman before resigning uh, to contest for the seat. Kwekule Ford is currently the MC of the area and one meeting. There too, counting has already been done. We are just waiting for uh, uh, confirmation there. But what I know is that James Eson is also in the lead. Let's come to Cape Coast North. There, we are, also, you know, we are still at the coalition center waiting for almost all the 19 police stations to print their, their results so we can have the confirmation. But it is also clear that Kobe uh, Achampong is also in the media five people contesting. We have Kobe Achampong, Charles Walker, Pakayale, Mr. Jiri Kiss, and one voicing. There in Cape Coast North, when you go to Petro, Boyson had zero. When you come to, uh, hello. Hi, we are we are we are still listening to you. Right. Ekit Ekit had fourteen in Petro. Then Kobe Echampo had fifty-eight. While Charles Walker also had fifty-eight. When you go to Inkamfwa, Kobe Echampo had two hundred and thirty-three. While Charles Walker had sixty sixty six zero. Ankafu Kobe Achampo had 20, Charles Walker had 65. When you go to Harris, we have Kobe Achampo taking 69, while Charles Walker 113. So the race in Cape Coast North is between Charles Walker and Kobe Achampo. Okay. And what we have gathered, Kobe Achampo is far ahead, so far as the risk is concerned. But it is still at the quality that are okay. looking for proper confirmation. Right. Thank you so much, Kinsley Nanabwedu. He's our central regional correspondent and he's been bringing it up to speed with uh, some of the latest results that are coming from the various constituencies. We now have the director of elections of the NDC, Mr. Samuel uh, Ufusuampo, on the line to tell us about the process so far. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Well, we are trying to still get back to him to tell us more about the process. And um, so we will be finding out from him about what really he makes of the process so far, especially with some of the complaints that have come uh, regarding the register. And so it's still news hour on GBC 24, uh, what we are getting so far from our various correspondents. Um, just 
as we heard from the central region, uh, some incumbents you know, have been declared to be in the lead for now. Uh, so the a Deputy Minister for Finance, uh, Rickett Hagen, is said to have won the seat. I guess we now have Mr. Samuel Ofusu Ampofa Ampofu on the line now to tell us about the process. Good evening, sir. Yes, so tell us about um, the general assessment of the process so far. Well, I think overall the, uh, the uh, day has been very successful, even though initially we had a few hitches here and there. Uh, uh, everything settled down smoothly, and uh, our assessment across the length and breadth of the country is that uh, voting has been peaceful, uh, everybody has been given equal opportunity, and people have uh, expressed their will through the ballot box, and the uh, results have been declared now. Mm. So we are very elated that we embark on this exercise, uh, uh, you know, with a, a lot of uh, caution, because this is the first time uh, any political party is expanding the frontiers of its internal uh, way of electing uh, parliamentary and presidential candidates. And uh, I want to say that, uh, commend all those who have played one role or the other in making this exercise a uh, very successful one. Mm. Uh, the Electoral Commission, our party executives at the constituency and the regional level, the election directorate uh, from national to region to constituency, the party functional executive committee, and entire membership of the party have done very, very well in bringing the party to this far. I think the day has been successful, it's a victory for democracy, and the NDC is indeed marching on. Mm. And uh, what about the few hitches of uh, reports generally of um, people's names not being in the register? What explains that? Well, uh, as I indicated earlier on in a number of press uh, uh, that I've spoken to, uh, we changed our manual way of doing things into uh, um, an electronic one. In other words, using a computer system. And once you're using computers, and then we are transmitting information from one end to the other, uh, there are bound to be a few challenges because uh, this is the first time we are adopting this uh, process. So we have uh, learned from our lessons. We have identified some of the challenges that we had and we believe that we should be able to perfect the system uh, and then next time around some of the challenges that we face with regard to the voters register for instance uh, will be a thing of the past hmm. and uh, what will happen to areas where voting did not take place today well i can assure you that uh, uh there will be voting tomorrow because the issue of our legal program has been settled. The candidates and the executives at the region were all at the headquarters here, and the matter has been put beyond doubt. And so tomorrow, Ningo program uh, will organize. Again, the number of uh, constituencies in the, the number of constituencies in the uh, Ashanti region where we had shortage uh, ballot paper shortages. I'm talking about. Uh, um, uh, Jira and uh, Tepa and a uh, few others in the Shanti region. Tomorrow we will conduct the election. The Obasi, I think Obasi East, mm. will also have uh, the election tomorrow. So, and then Kumbungu, Kumbungu had some challenges earlier on in the day. And so by the time the uh, issues were resolved, it was very late for the pools to begin. So. Together with the Electoral Commission, uh, the decision was to push Kumbungu to tomorrow. So Kumbungu will also have their election tomorrow. Mm. I must say that all outstanding constituencies that uh, did not uh, vote today will be voting tomorrow. Where it was as a result of shortage of materials, we have dispatched all the materials. And so by tomorrow, 7 o'clock, we should be able to do the remaining constituencies uh, that are left. All right. So thank you so much, sir, for the interview. And so that's the director of elections of the NDC, Mr. Samuel Ofusu Ampofu, telling us about the process so far. And uh, he's given the assurance that those areas where voting did not take place today, tomorrow, they may have their turn.
It's still news hour on GBC 24 and GTV. We are still uh, following the elections of the National Democratic Congress and we will be bringing you more interviews regarding the process so far. We'll be back with more. Joining us by phone now is pollster and editor of the Daily Dispatch newspaper, Ben Epson, to tell us his impressions about the NDC elections. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hello, good evening, sir. Hello, good evening. Yes. Generally, how will you describe the whole process? Yes. Generally, how will you describe the whole process? Oh, I think that given the time frame that the NDC embarked on this by message thing, having been involved in 269 of the 275 constituencies, I would say that generally it has been good. I mean, definitely there are, there are a few problems, people not getting their names, a few constituencies have been settled for tomorrow. But on the whole, I think it's been good. And there have, of course, been a few surprises, so... <laughs> okay, so now, but let's look at this, some of the specifics. What are you picking up so far? I think that uh, um, two of the most hottest have been Ningo Prampam, which has been postponed to tomorrow. I can confirm Kwate call the constituency, whereas the Nathan Rollins got 62.4%. The incumbent member of Farmer Niamat, they got 35 and the third constant, that's five percent, and then Coleman got two point six seven percent. In terms of there were three thousand eight hundred and fifty one values was cast. The Dr. Rollins had two thousand four hundred and three. That is sixty two point four. Niyama I should say had thousand four hundred and forty eight, that's thirty five percent. And Coleman had hundred, that is two point six percent. We are picking up that the Minister of Chief Stancy has won his constituency, but the results are not trickling in. So as of when they come, you'll be able to give you further details. Mm. What about Medina area? What have you heard so far? Medina area, just as you called me, I was on the other line, but mm. I had to pick your call. Okay. But Medina, the results were quite close, so I haven't been able to confirm that. I have one of my guys, the Medina, mm. Adenta are constituencies that have a lot of interest because Essentially, uh, Adenta is a stream constituency nationally. Mm. Particularly, it's a stream constituency nationally. So we monitor these three constituencies because the attitude of the party among themselves has an, e has an effect on whether the party goes into the 20, um, 2016 parliamentary elections mm. in a unified manner or not. Mm. And uh, uh, let's focus a bit. The central region, uh, the report that we've had so far, uh, we've had about Rickett uh, Hagan uh, leading, uh, actually winning by 84% based on what we've received so far. Uh, Hannah Tete also, 97%, and others which have come in. What do you make of such results so far? <coughs> These are not surprising. Hmm. You see, um Kotekole had its own dynamics, you know, and I hope that lessons will be learned. <laughs> Ethnicity in politics by itself is not bad. But when you try to abuse it, it, it gives you a problem. The supporters of the incumbent started a campaign which I think contributed to his loss. You know, that the children for wait for Zanetor because he's not gay. Get mistake they made because particularly that Adabraka, mm. Osu Kinka, Osu Market, and so on. There are a lot of ethnic groups there, and there were three candidates. You are asking them to vote for her, not the guy saying that the other people should vote for her. Mm. These are lessons that, in general, the other political party should pick up when it comes to national. Ethnicity, three percent of the average, three point four, three to four percent vote on ethnicity. It might be used in a manner that will not boomerang back on the person. Mm. Okay. okay. Uh, final two constituencies Nadoli, Kalio, and then Ablik Mustard. What are you seeing so far? Ablik Mustard, what I'm taking from the results so far, are that the mayor of Africa is leading. But I'm just saying so far because mm. some of the, I mean, the person who is contesting with wisdom, this will be his third attempt. 
So definitely you have strong areas. But from what I've been thinking, if the mayor of Accra is loose, and I'm sure maybe by your late news, mm. we would have had some more confirmed results. Mm. Uh, and Nadoli? Hello, sir. Hello, yes, I'm here. Yeah, yeah Nadoli Kalio. Hello, Kali, I, mean, uh, I was on the phone, but I'm sure I'm sure you have a, maybe one more bullet in on an hour's time. I'll be able to give you okay. some confirmed results okay. for some, some of the reasons that I have. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Poster you, and editor of the Daily Dispatch, Ben Epstein, has been sharing with us what he's been seeing so far from um, the various results that have been trickling in. Uh, at least he's confirmed that uh, based on what he has also been able to gather in the Clote Kole constituency, where the daughter of former President Jeriton Rollins, that's Zanetto Rollins, was also contesting against the incumbent, uh, Ni Ama Ashite, uh, the daughter of Jeriton Rollins has actually uh, swept that particular seat and then also some other places he's been telling us about them we'll still wait to see how all of these pan out let's go to the western region now and speak to our correspondent stevenson agri good evening stevenson hello stevenson We are trying to still get him through, and so we'll still be bringing you up to date with what's happening on the ground. We have various reporters across the country. They will be updating us on what is happening and what results they are also seeing so far. Various uh, collation centers where they are stationed. And um, so far, well, the picture, some incumbents are retaining their seats, others too have been thrown out. And so that's what we are picking up so far. We still will be bringing you more. I hear Stevenson is on the line now. Stevenson? Hello, Conrad. Yes, good evening. And uh, what are you picking up so far? Yeah, we just left the coalition center and then um, we um, also picked out that the deputy regional minister um, took the Takuradi constituency and then um, the regional minister also took the SRC constituency where she contested. And now the Electoral Commission is going to meet the media tomorrow, 1 o'clock, to give us all the results from the readings. Okay, and um, describing the whole process, uh, what have you observed today that you have been all around the place? Yes. Conor, I can hear you, please. Okay, I'm asking, what are your general observations since you went through town? Well, the, the only thing that we, we realized was a, a challenge that a lot of people couldn't get their name in the register. That's been a challenge in the, um, the, um, the primaries. So uh, as of now, the executives are trying to find ways to solve that problem. And that was the only challenge that we realized. Mm. But were some of the elections called off? Did some Hello? of, yes, I'm asking, uh, some of the polling st centers, did they have the elections called off? Some of the elections? Yeah, I mean, some of the electoral areas, did they have the elections called off? No, that, no, 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 please. All the elections were... I, I can't get the question very clear, please. Okay. All right. Don't worry. I think that will be all for now. Thank you so much, Stevenson Agri. Uh, he's our Western Regional Correspondent, and he's also been telling us about the process there so far. He says that uh, based on some confirmed results that he's, he's got, um, uh, the deputy uh, minister for that particular region has taken the Takradi uh, seat, and then also the minister himself also has also won his seat. Uh, let's now speak to Gifty AJ. Uh, she is still at the... Uh, Clote Kole constituency and she also has some updates for us. Good evening, Gifty. Hello, Gifty. Hello. Yes, so Gifty, AJ, you're live. What do you have to report to us now? Yeah, we're still at the Osu police station where collation is supposed to start any moment from now. Just a GP, uh, Conrad. We've been here, we were here that when we saw some few ballot boxes being carried into a car, and uh, this has sparked some form of you know, misunderstanding, and everybody is turned out asking why uh, this is taking place. But I have one of the officials in the constituency, the communication uh, director, and uh, we will talk to you. Hello, sir. Yes. 
can you explain to me what really happened here? Yeah, actually, we have finished making a call center study. You know, I was voting to clear the mind. I guess we had a commission case. So this time, a commission case that is the superlative issue. And over there, it's where we do the commission of the attack. This is how we understand. And we came here, and then we have worked to do the correct question. So it was easy, not any party, but easy. No, 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 no. All right, thank you so much, uh, Gift TAJ at the Clote Kole constituency. Uh, that's a very interesting constituency, and uh, she's been talking about the fact that uh, there is some kind of misunderstanding there at where the votes are supposed to be collated. Uh, however, um, we would continue to pick up signals from there, and whatever it is, we'll bring it to you. It's still our coverage of the NDC primaries. And this is News Hour on GBC 24 and GTV. Thank you.